fairly frequently people send me emails asking what's a good lathe to start with or I want to get into metalworking, what's a good lathe to start with? In this video, we'll try to answer that. So we'll start this video, there's a few caveats we should put in place. I'm going to say your hobby budget is between $500 and $1,000. Uh, I think that's kind of a good range to get into metalworking. You're going to be doing metalworking, so you're turning metal, obviously. Uh, and let me say your work is about this big. If your work is any larger than, you know, yay size, your lathe isn't going to be, you're not going to get a good lathe at a thousand bucks. Like if you're doing something that you want something capability this large, you're going to have to spend more. It's just, that's the way it works. If you do find something in the price range that'll do something this big, it's it's not going to be very good. So we'll just say your work is relatively small, pens, yo-yos, whips, chains, whistles, yo-yos, keychains, doodads, stuff like that. So that immediately brings up a bunch of choices. You have your like Harbor Freight, Princess Auto, Alibaba, eBay kind of machines, which I'm just going to refer all to as offshore machines. And then you have a few of machines that are made in North America. Uh, Tag, Shirtline, I'm sure there's others, but Tag and Shirtline are the only ones I'm really familiar with. And they kind of have a really long history and a massive user race. So I'm going to talk about those. What I would initially recommend if you're a beginner, don't go, <laughs> put it this way. In life, there's, you have the, the, the triangle of Quality, right? Uh, good, fast, and cheap. Everyone knows about that when you only only pick two out of the three triangle. With machine tools, I feel like you have the same choice. Quality, features, price. You only get to pick two of them. Offshore machines, loads of features, great price, really crappy quality. Uh, like, t cat hair. Tag, Sureline, good quality, kind of lacking in features, good price. So, if you want quality and features, you're just gonna have to pay more for it. I think you're better off or you're served better off with quality. If you buy a machine, if you buy an offshore machine, I think you're gonna spend a lot more time tinkering with the machine to get the qual or to get the results you want as opposed to just learning how to machine properly. People will disagree with me. I know there's loads of people out there that are running these inexpensive machines and they've modified them to work how they want. If you like to do that and you're into tinkering and you think you can make a relatively inexpensive machine better by tweaking with it, all the power to you. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying, if you're a raw rookie, you've never done metalworking, start with something quality, start with something that's easy to work with, and then you can track your results from there. You can see if you're becoming a better machinist because of your skills, or if you're just learning how to work with the inadequacies of your machine. Let's assume you get a shirt line, let's assume you get a tag, let's assume you get some other quality machine that I have not yet heard of, but is of decent quality at a price point that you like. The next piece you're gonna have to do is a way to clamp the material that you wanna work with. Mostly is it, most most of the lathe at this price range will come with a three jaw chalk or the ability to purchase a three jaw chalk will come with it. Three jaws are great. They just lack the ability to clamp concentrically, especially in this price range. You're not going to be getting a high quality three jaw chalk. My recommendation would be right off the jump, go to a four jaw chalk. It's more difficult to use because you have to clock it in. There's amazing videos online of how to clock in uh, a four jaw chuck. But once you learn that skill, you'll become a much better machinist and all your products or all, all the work you do will become better because of it. You can you can take pieces out, you can index them back in or you can spin them around, you can move them and you can dial it back in so that they're spinning concentric again. With a three jaw, they just don't clamp concentrically. And if you're doing fine work, you're going to have difficulties. If the work you're going to do isn't going to matter for it, you're just going to clamp in, you're going to make a shift knob or something like that, part it off and you're done with it, then it doesn't matter to you. But in my opinion, if you kind of want to get into this, um, I feel like a four jaw chuck is better served for you and they're usually less money. So win-win. Uh, the next little bit would be tooling. CNC tooling, indexables. That's kind of the way they went. With manual mills, especially of this size, high speed steel is the way to go. It's old and antiquated when it comes to production shops, but for high or for uh, hobby style work, high speed steel is totally the way to go. It's inexpensive. It gives you good surface finishes in the metals we work with, and uh, readily available. And you can grind your own like form tooling. It's the way to go. Once again, a million good videos on YouTube of how to grind your own tooling, um, especially with high speed steel. I will link more videos. I'll, I'll just keep putting cards up there of really cool videos that that I've learned from um, that are very helpful to the to the beginner machinist. The next great accessory I'd recommend for a lathe, um, especially if you're into this and you're really enjoying this hobby, is a milling attachment for a lathe. It's basically like kind of a, a block like this and then it sits on the carriage. So it moves back and forth the carriage this way and then closer and towards the headstock. And uh, the cross side lets it go up and down. So you essentially get a milling machine on its side. If you don't have a milling machine, that's a, a good kind of stopgap. It's what I used for a long time before I actually bought a milling machine. It's a good feature because it's like usually a hundred bucks for these small machines. Um, and it lets you do a lot more work than what a lathe. A lathe would do round work. This now lets you kind of mill more square objects. 
Um, a, lot of, a lot of work you can do. People do amazing work with just that. So that, that would, uh, that should suffice you for a long time in this little metalworking hobby and you can grow with it. As for offshore machines, I have nothing against offshore machines. I don't recommend them as your first machine. I have an offshore milling machine. I paid a lot more money for it. I think it was 2000 odd dollars Canadian. Um, I feel like once you get in the $2,000 or $3,000 price range for some of the off offshore machines, the, the way they're cutting corners becomes less of an issue because they have more price range to work with. The bottom of the barrel kind of cheapest lathes and cheapest milling machines you can get, I just, I just don't think they're worth it. I think offshore machines have their place. Like I said, I just think it's in the $2,000 plus price range. So that's it. That's basically my summary of what I would recommend getting in for a machine. All that stuff you should be able to get for under a thousand. Any money extra you have or budget extra you have, you should put towards um, a good set of drills, some relatively inexpensive measuring tools, and you're off to the races. I don't know. There's not much to it. Kind of. There's so many, so many avenues online to learn, and so many videos on YouTube uh, to learn about. There's just, there's no excuse not to get into metalworking if it's something you want to do. So. Hopefully this video is interesting to some of you. Um, I hope it answers some of the questions that some of you have had. And uh, that's all I have to say on it. So thanks for watching. Bye.